Hey guys, it's Demon BK, and today I'm bringing some Black Ops 3 on the PC. In this gameplay, I'm going to be using the VMP with the War Machine on the map Nuketown, and this is going to be a nuclear. I finally got a nuclear uh, the other day, uh, and when I mean finally, I've got nuclears before, as we all know. I think I've got like 22 odd nuclears now, but I've been choking nuclears worse than your mother the last few days. Like, I've been choking like absolutely crazy, and uh, I, I had a day where the stars sort of lined up, the COD gods answered my request and I got three nuclears in one session and I was just like okay this is awesome so yeah I've got a couple of nuclears to show you guys over the next few days unfortunately I think two of them are with the VMP I've got one with the P90 or the Weevil I think it is but I have got different specialists on for each video to sort of make it a little bit different I suppose uh, that's one thing about this game I, I generally just stick to a couple of weapons and as of late it's been the VMP I felt like the CUDA has got a bit too like unreliable for me I, I i don't know if they've changed it or nerfed it or anything but it just feels like it's a hit marker machine whereas the vmp spits out the bullet so quick it generally puts people down fairly quickly so yeah i've got a couple of nuclears coming over in the next few days if you want to see an updated barracks guide or something like that showing all my medals and my kd and my win loss and leaderboard stuff let me know down below and i can definitely do it for you guys so if you're into pcs you probably know more about this than i do but amd came out and they actually spoke about their next gpus like the polaris uh, architecture and it looks promising it really really does but I do have some sort of, you know, qualms with it. And that is basically, they came out and released more information and we've got a, an RX 480 GPU. And they're on stage touting how amazing this, this graphics card is. And one of the, the biggest benefits to this is it actually only costs $200 for one card and, and that's awesome but they did put it head to head against the gtx 1080 that as of um i think what two weeks now it's been out for it's it doesn't do well singular but if you put it into a crossfire configuration so you have two of these ready on rx 480s it actually performs better than the 1080s so you've got the 1080 that costs around about 700 dollars you've got two rx 480s which is just under 500 dollars and yeah, that looks amazing. It really, really does because you've got the 1080 doing 58.7 FPS and then you've got the two AMD cards doing 62.5 FPS. So you're probably thinking, oh, okay, I can have two cards in my machine and it's going to be a lot warmer than just a single card maybe. It's going to be a bit more of a power hog. Well, that's not the case actually. You're looking at better efficiency on the AMD side of things. And this is looking really promising. I am a little bit sort of skeptical because as we all know, not all games work well with dual graphics card setups. Like for me, for instance, I had a dual setup a little while ago with the HD 7770 VaporX from, Sa uh, from Sapphire. And they were great cards, but some games it worked amazing, some games it was just horrendous and the frame rate actually tanked because of having two cards. So I'd have to disable one and then I would get, you know, moderate performance. Well, the RX 480, when you have it in a scenario where it's getting 62 FPS, and I can't remember what game it was, versus the 1080 getting 58.7 FPS, the GPU on the NVIDIA side, so the 1080, was at 98% utilization. So that means it's almost at 100% used. Then you look at the AMD side of things, and it's only 51% used. So I am questioning the, the fact, well... If it's only using 51% of a dual setup, is there any point in having that extra card? Like, surely you could just max utilize one card. I'm, like I said, I'm completely ignorant. Uh, I don't really understand the the terminology and how sort of GPUs work to a certain degree. I know the basics, and it's something that I just I stay away from. I just play on the PC, and I have done for years. But I just I don't look into that too much. I just look at the numbers. If it performs well for the game that I want to play, i.e. Black Ops 3, and I'm going to get high FPS, well then that's the card I'm going to jump to. It does make me think, well, is there any point in having two of these if I'm only using 51 utilization? They did say, well, because it's only using 51%, we can tweak it with the up-and-coming drivers for that architecture. There's a lot more tweaks that can be done API-wise with games and all that sort of thing. But as we all know, not all games like having two graphics cards. It's not like when you add two cards together, you get double the performance. That really isn't the case. I know that much. And also VRAM isn't actually mixed. But I did hear 
uh, a little thing that apparently DX12 is going to introduce that where VRAM will be mixed. I'm not too sure if that's still the thing. I'm pretty sure I heard that a few years ago now. Uh, but if that's the case, this looks like a, a really good way to go. I'm just really excited to see what else AMD have up their sleeves because Nvidia really can't answer to this, I don't think. I think this is going to be a big shock to Nvidia. For the $200 price mark for a card that's going to perform this well is, is crazy, crazy good. So if you're looking for a budget card, really, this is the card to go for. And I just can't wait to see what AMD have to offer in the $700 sort of mark. What is their 1080 sort of AMD card equivalent? Do you know what I mean? Like, what is that going to be? Because if this $200 card is performing this well, surely that one's going to blow everything out the water. Well, that's that's what I'm hoping for. And to be honest with the AMD side of things, I'm really looking forward to the, the CPUs and to see what we're going to get on that front. That's something that I'm really looking forward to. We haven't had AMD CPUs that perform really well in the last few years. Like the FX series, I'm on an FX uh, CPU right now. It, it isn't what we were hoping for. We were promised a lot more. It didn't live up to the hype. It's still a great CPU lineup, but it isn't what it was before. And I'm really hoping that AMD can sort of bring back a bit more of the market share. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.